So welcome, we will start on the next topic which is on query optimization. So what do we mean by query optimization is that we have previously seen the different query processing algorithms and for a particular query different such algorithms can be applied. So the question is which algorithm to apply and that is a topic of discussion for this uh, query optimization. Now first of all we must understand why there can be different uh, ways of evaluating a query. So that is called an equivalent expression. So there can be multiple expressions in relational algebra which are equivalent and I am going to give an example right away. But equivalent, the word equivalent means that no matter what the input is, the two expressions that are considered to be equivalent to each other for the same input they must result in the same output no matter what the in input is. It is not for a only a specific particular type of input but for all possible inputs. And here is an example of two equivalent expressions. Let us see. So first of all suppose there is a account that is joined, natural joined with depositor. Now this the result of this is then natural joined with branch. The result of that is then applied through a sigma function which is say branch C T is equal to your A B C does not some some expression and finally this is being uh, pied over all the customer names. So what does this uh, expression wants to the what does this expression tries to do is find tries to find out the customer names or names of all customers who has an account in a branch which is located in the city ABC. So that is what the idea of doing this. Now this is one way of evaluating it. Now what does this equivalent expression mean? Is that when such an expression is being shown this is called an expression tree. So when this is being done what it says is that first of all account and depositor the natural join of account and depositor is performed. The result of that is then natural join with branch. From the result of that the uh, selection on this branch CT is being done and finally this uh, projection is being done. So the competition proceeds or the order proceeds from the leaf to the top that is what is being done. Now there is an equivalent expression which can be done in the following manner. Now let us try to write it down. So suppose there is this branch on which the sigma b c t is done and that is then joined with the natural join of account and depositor and finally the customer name is being projected out. Okay. So first of all why are this equivalent? The reason is so what have we done here? The first of all is that this branch CT expression the selection on the branch CT expression that has been brought earlier than the join. So this has been brought earlier than the join. So this evolution plan goes from here to here. So this is done before this join is done. Why is that equivalent? Is that the branch CT attribute is present only in the branch. So it does not matter whether the join is done before or afterwards as far as the correctness is concerned. But one can see what is the effect of doing this. The output at the end of this uh, selection, the output that is produced here is much lesser than the output that is produced here. So this join is a much faster join, much more efficient join than this join because this is joined with the entire branch table. This, this part of course is the same as this. This is joined with the entire branch table while as this is joined with only the branches that is in the city of ABC. So this is going to be a much faster. So the whole idea of this query optimization is to figure out all these equivalent expressions and then out of those equivalent expression ones choose the one that is supposedly faster, that is supposedly better. Now uh, between these two one can clearly see that this is going to be uh, faster or at least as worse as this thing. So this is going to be the, so the database engine 
will actually evaluate the query in the this manner and not this manner. So, this is the one that is followed. Now, this is the equivalent expression, then there is something called an evaluation plan. The evaluation plan in addition to this equivalent expression also says which algorithm is going to be used for each of these operations. So, for example, this is a natural join and there are as we saw there are 5 join algorithms that can be applied to do each of this, uh, uh, it can be applied to do these joins. So, which algorithm is going to be done? So, that is what is called the evaluation plan. So, an expression of the evaluation plan may be the following. So, let me again write down one uh, example. So, suppose this is branch and then you say this is some sigma which is being done this sigma is done using an index, then that is joined and this in turn is done with let us say there is another uh, relation depositor from which some another sigma is done. This sigma is let us say done using a linear scan, then this join is let us say the merge join and then there is another join that is being done which is let us say the hash join because this is done with let us say the account or something and finally there is a projection taken which is simply removing duplicates etc. because this uh, removing duplicates can be done. So, this is the complete evaluation plan because it each of these operations the corresponding algorithm is also mentioned. So, that is what an evaluation plan is. It is a little more elaborate than just an equivalent expression. So, the optimization plan is to do a cost based optimization plan. So, each of these evaluation plans, the estimate of the cost is being first uh, made and the evaluation plan that results in the least cost estimate is being executed. Now, no, note that this is just an estimate. So, what may actually happen is there may be another evaluation plan which will result in a better uh, run time for a particular query, but uh, the estimates were unable to say that and, and, and the database engine just follows what the best estimate is being given. So, coming back to the point of equivalent expressions, let us go over this uh, when can two expressions be said equivalent. As I said, two expressions, two relational algebra expressions are equivalent if they generate the same set of output for the same set of input. And this is being specified by a set of equivalence rules. So, we will specify many such rules there and this specifies which expressions are equivalent. And then once a uh, expression tree is being generated, so from one expression tree, so let us say this is expression tree one, each of these equivalence rules is applied. So, there is some expression inside this expression tree for e an equivalence expression rule is being applied to generate another expression tree and this keeps on going till all the expressions and all the equivalence expressions are being exhausted. So, this is the total set of all the expression trees that are generated and by the generation mechanism these are all going to be equivalent expression trees because from one tree to the another only one uh, expression is changed and the equivalence rule says that the expression 1 in the, this uh, tree is equivalent to the expression 2 in this tree. So, that means these two trees are equivalent. So, let us now go over what the equivalence rules are. The first equivalence rule is the following is that if this is being done, so if the sigma contains two conditions theta 1 and theta 2 that is same as applying the conditions that same as doing the two sigmas one after another. This is easier to understand and this is also the same as in I mean changing the order of doing these two sigmas because it is and and it does not matter. So, this is the first equivalence rule. The second equivalence rule is if there is a series of projections, suppose there is a series of projections and finally, there is an L n of E. This is same as just doing the last projection. Now, of course, for this to happen, 
it must be that L1 is a subset of L2 and L2 is a subset of Ln and all those things. But then all these projections does not make any sense. So, one can simply do the final projection. The next equivalent rule is suppose there is a E1 Cartesian product of E2 and then there is a sigma, there is a condition predicate applied to it. Now, this is essentially the definition of the joint. So, this is simply the join of E1 with E2. Now the after the Cartesian product is done, if the sigma is, uh, if the selection is done, that is the same as doing the join. Using the join, something more can be done. So, suppose there is a, and there is the join condition is theta 2, and then there is a selection on theta 1 is being done. That is same as doing the join itself on theta 1 and theta 2. Now, whenever I am writing down these equivalent expressions, all of them can be proved, but uh, you can at least intuitively follow that uh, these are going to be correct and the proofs if you want, you can try. The next one is that the how do you write the join, whether E 1 is in the left or E 1 uh, E 2 is in the left does not matter. So, it is simply uh, commutative that is the easier one to understand. Then there is something interesting. So, this is a join and that is finally joined with E 3. This is equivalent to first doing the join of E 2 and E 3 and then doing the join on E 1. Now, there are some assumptions inside this is that uh, E 2 and E 3 can be. So, these are natural joints by the way. So, there is a as assumption is that E 2 and E 3 do share attributes. So, that the natural joint can be handled so, and similarly E 1 and E 2 can have. So, E 2 is essentially the central relation that shares attributes with both E 1 and E 3. So, it does not matter which natural join is first done. So, E 2 can go with E 1 first and then with E 3 or it can go with E 3 first and then with E 1. In, in a very similar rule is for the Cartesian product which is probably easier to understand, but let me just write it down for completeness. Again, it is the same idea that it does not matter which Cartesian product is done first. <coughs>